Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and reviews show. This time we're bringing you the all new Ford Mustang. Yes, it still has a V8, and yes, it's still manual. We'll also have Mazda's latest SUV, the new CX-5, plus Toyota's all-new iGo X, a tiny city car with some off-road flavour. Plus, we take a look at Cadillac's first EV, the Lyric. It certainly looks the part, but is it good enough to take on BMW and Jaguar? We'll find out later on. Now, though, the news. Stellantis has announced plans to build a new vehicle remanufacturing plant in Turin as part of its goal to increase recycling revenues. The 10 million euro investment will see the existing Mia Fiori plant, which currently builds the electric Fiat 500, used to recondition used cars whilst also dismantling and recycling older parts models. This isn't an industry first though. Renault and Toyota already have similar schemes, with Renault's facility in France already turning around used cars ready for resale in eight days, saving time and costs at dealerships. As well as refurbishing older cars, Fiat's Mia Fiori plant will also produce new dual-clutch gearboxes for new hybrid models from 2024. Cadillac has revealed its first electric car. Rivaling premium EV SUVs like the BMW iX and Jaguar I-Pace, the new Lyric, and that's Lyric with a Q, promises to be the luxury brand's quietest car yet. And first off, we must say it is a good-looking car, with a modern twist on Cadillac's existing design language, with a stylish illuminated grille panel, the only real giveaway to the electric powertrain. The Lyric is the first car to use General Motors' new scalable battery architecture, which will eventually be used on a whole range of new EVs from Cadillac and Chevrolet. Unlike many manufacturers though, Cadillac hasn't gone chasing straight line speed with its debut EV. Instead, the Lyric is built to be as refined and as quiet as possible, enhancing the luxury experience while maintaining adequate performance thanks to a 340 horsepower electric motor on the rear axle. It's still no slouch though, managing 0 to 60 in under six seconds. But for speed freaks, there is an all wheel drive version with 500 horsepower. With the new Lyric, GM is launching its new line of Ultimum batteries, scalable to fit different platforms. They'll range from 50 to 200 kilowatt hours with the biggest reserved for the mammoth Hummer. The Lyric's battery is 102 kilowatt hours with a range of up to 312 miles on the money in this segment. Inside the cabin, the Lyric lacks some of the sense of occasion one finds in a BMW iX, but it will be familiar and easy to use for any existing Cadillac owners. It is all high quality though, with some tasteful bright work set amongst classy open pour wood trim. There are flashes of blue too, both in the lighting and the leather, while a big curved infotainment screen joins up to the digital instrument cluster. Similar to the system found in the latest Escalade, the infotainment can be used as a touchscreen or via a click wheel on the center console, making it nice and easy to use. Naturally, CarPlay and Android Auto are included, as is a Wi-Fi hotspot and a fancy 19-speaker premium audio system by AKG.
But how does it stack up against its rivals? Well, starting with BMW's iX, it's looking good for the caddy. BMW has received plenty of criticism for its styling recently, and rightly so. The iX is an acquired taste to say the least, but thankfully once you're inside it, you don't have to look at it. The cabin goes some way to making up for the exterior with some beautiful design touches and top-notch materials. A 100 kilowatt hour battery sits under the floor, sending power to two electric motors, one for each axle. It gets an impressive 376 mile range, and the battery can be charged at a rate of 200 kWh, meaning you'll be able to reach an 80% charge in under 40 minutes. To go with the iX's futuristic looks, it's packed full of some pretty futuristic technology. BMW says it has 20 times more computing power than anything else they've built, capable of processing all of the necessary data for autonomous driving. There's also a sportier M60 version of 611 brake horsepower capable of 0-62 in 3.9 seconds. And then there's this, an old favourite by now, the Jaguar I-Pace. In EV terms, it's been around since the Stone Age, but this is still an immensely impressive car. The range now stands at 292 miles, slightly less than the Cadillac, but it's faster and still brilliant to look at both inside and out. However, one area where the Cadillac wins hands down is price. While it's aimed to compete against the best from Europe, the Lyric comes in at around £10,000 less than a Jaguar I-Pace or Audi e-tron, and more than £20,000 less than a BMW iX. Sadly, we are unlikely to see the Lyric here in Europe, as the new electric Cadillac looks like a very impressive car indeed. City cars are becoming rarer these days. Lower profit margins and strict emissions regulations on small cars and the current popularity of SUVs and crossovers have meant we've seen cars like the Volkswagen Up and Fiat 500 have much longer lifespans than older equivalents. Another example was this, the Toyota iGo. But with sales beginning to dwindle, it seems that 2022 is finally the year we get a replacement. And here it is, the new Toyota iGo Cross. First things first, it looks great. It has an aggressive stance with chunky, squat proportions, taking inspiration from the countless crossovers on the market. It gets some SUV styling cues like the big wheel arches, which are available in a variety of contrasting colours. Inside, the interior is similarly funky, with a big, bright infotainment screen housed within its own pod in the dashboard. As you'd expect in a car in this class, it's all quite plasticky, but so are its rivals and it keeps the cost down. Elsewhere, you get a smart-looking steering wheel with lots of buttons on it and some body-coloured accents like you got in the old iGo. However, unlike the old iGo, this new model is not sharing anything with Citroën and Peugeot, both of which have ditched their smallest city cars. This is all Toyota then, and it shows. The platform is a shrunken version of the Yaris's, which means it's wider and more spacious than before. The SUV-style body cladding is matched by a higher driving position and taller suspension, making it something of a city car crossover. In theory, that's not a totally new concept. Fiat has been building jacked-up pandas for decades, and Audi has a slightly larger A1 city carver. It does, though, put the iGo Cross in rather a unique position in the market, one which we fully expect to expand. The biggest area of improvement for the iGo is its practicality. Old models had tiny boots, but this new one gets a luggage capacity of 231 litres. 
that's not just more than the old car, but more than most of its rivals. There's more passenger space too, thanks to its slightly bigger dimensions and longer wheelbase. Powering the iGo Cross is a one-litre three-cylinder petrol motor producing a whopping 71 brake horsepower. As standard, it comes with a five-speed manual box, but for an extra £1,000, you can get a CVT automatic. With city cars now dropping like flies from manufacturers' lineups, it's great that Toyota is still committed to providing small, affordable cars, and even better to see them doing something a bit different while they're at it. Join us again after the break as the all-new Ford Mustang breaks cover. Still to come, Ford's all-new Mustang. But first... Mazda isn't busy building hatchbacks and small sports cars, it quietly produces some of our favourite SUVs. The CX-30 remains one of the very best crossovers more than two years after its launch, while this, the CX-5, is an interesting alternative to the raft of VW Group competitors. It's been around for a while now, but for 2023 it's got some updates. Both front and rear bumpers have been updated and new lights all round have freshened up the styling. The rest of the car looks the same and that's no bad thing with the CX-5's classy and curvy lines, a signature of Mazda's Kodo design language. Step inside and the changes are similarly subtle. There's a new wireless phone charger and the seats have been redesigned to be more comfortable. Otherwise, it's same as ever with the simple, logically laid out controls and some of the finest fit and finish you're likely to see at this price point. To keep it up to date though, there is some new tech on board. There's a range of new driving modes courtesy of Mazda's MyDrive system, which adjusts the car to suit the road surface you're on. There's an off-road mode too, which Mazda says makes the CX-5 feel more natural on slippery surfaces. There's also a new system that allows for basic autonomous driving at low speeds to reduce driver fatigue in traffic jams. On top of that, there are now three new trim levels to choose from. The basic spec SEL remains as does the mid-range Sport, but they're now joined by new ground Sport Black and top spec GT Sport. Each of the new trims comes with bespoke styling enhancements and varying levels of kit. Under the bonnet, the CX-5 is available with four different powertrains, two petrol and two diesels. The petrol range kicks off with a 163 brake horsepower 2.0-litre with either an excellent six-speed manual or an optional automatic driving the front wheels. Topping the range is a meaty 2.5 litre producing 191 brake horsepower. Models with this engine are auto only, but they do get all wheel drive. The diesel options both use the same 2.2 litre motor offered with either 148 or 181 horsepower. Both power the front wheels only as standard via a manual transmission, but the latter can be specced with four wheel drive and an auto box. With no hybrid options though, some buyers might be tempted to look elsewhere. This is the Volkswagen Tiguan, but you knew that already. Tiguans are everywhere and for good reason. They are spacious, well-built and good-looking, not to mention practical with the option of a seven-seater in this slightly longer all-space model. And now VW has introduced a plug-in hybrid to the range. Called the E-Hybrid, it bridges the gap between the ICE Tiguans and the electric ID4. 
Capable of up to 30 miles on a charge, the e-hybrid pairs its batteries with a 1.4-litre four-cylinder petrol engine with a combined output of 242 brake horsepower. As a result, it's a fair bit quicker than even the most powerful Mazda, but it is more expensive. Lower running costs may balance out the difference in time, but at a starting price, £37,000, it's a full nine grand more than an entry-level CX-5. What the Mazda lacks in electrification, then it makes up for with good value, excellent build quality and a classy image. If you're after a practical family SUV that won't break the bank, the CX-5 should definitely be on your shortlist. As we hope you will have noticed by now, ours is a broad church at Auto Mundial. Be it V12 supercars or electric SUVs, we know that you're as passionate as we are about all things automotive. Every now and then though, we come across something that really gets our blood pumping. A car that stands out above the rest. And this is one such machine, the all-new Ford Mustang. It's certainly not every day we get to say that, so let's take a moment and drink it in. Recently revealed in Detroit, the new Mustang has a long and storied legacy to maintain especially as we head into an age of electrification. And that brings us on to the hot topic of what's under that long bonnet. Well, we're delighted to report that the new Mustang has a V8. Even better, between said V8 and the driver is a manual gearbox. It seems then that not all hope is lost for the devout petrolheads. Details on the figures produced by the engine remain under wraps for now, but we can tell you it's still a 5 litre, so we can expect upwards of 450 horsepower that you get in the outgoing car. The so-called Gen 4 V8 features rev matching for heel and toe style downshifts, as well as a new dual air intake and a throttle body on each bank of cylinders. If the six-speed manual isn't to your tastes, there will also be a 10-speed auto on offer, with both gearboxes sending power to the rear wheels. A smaller four-cylinder motor will also be offered, but both versions get improved handling. The chassis is set to be an improvement over the old one, with reduced compliance from steering wheel to tyre, as well as a faster steering ratio to sharpen cornering. It should be a proper driver's car then, and that's before we've seen any Shelby variants. On the styling front, the 2024 Mustang is a clear evolution of what's come before. Proportionately, it's similar to the current model, but with sharper lines and a bigger front grille, it looks much more modern. It's clearly still a Mustang, but one that isn't as caught up in harking back to the 60s and 70s. It looks more aggressive, with vents on the bonnet and massive 19-inch wheels hiding some new Brembo brakes. At the back, the signature three-bar tail lights have been remodelled, while four big exhaust tips poke out of the rear diffuser. It looks fantastic and it's a similar story inside where we find an all-new cabin. The biggest talking point of the interior is the screens. No more physical dials, instead there's a 12.4-inch digital dash blended seamlessly into a 13.2-inch infotainment screen with Ford's latest SYNC 4 operating system displaying drive modes and navigation. Worryingly, many of the physical controls have been moved to the screen, but this does create a pleasingly clean dashboard and centre console, even if it doesn't look quite as up-to-date as rivals from Europe. That 
said, most of its Euro rivals won't pack so much under their bonnets. Go for a Continental V8 and you'll be looking at something twice the price of a Stang. Z4's basic Caymans and fast TTs all make do with fewer cylinders. And if the current Mustang is anything to go by, they're the cars it'll be priced against. Over in the States too, the Mustang is now in a class of its own. Dodge is killing off the Challenger at the end of next year, while the Chevy Camaro is really starting to feel its age. The Ford Mustang looks set to be one of the most exciting new releases of next year and one of the last ever V8-powered manual coupes. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out AMG's latest fast saloon, the Mercedes C43.